I think that there was reluctance on the physician's standpoint to embrace the treatment because the original results published were the interim results on only half of the patients. I think that the release of the new data that incorporate all the patients was long time follow up. Again, we are talking about four year data right now and hopefully by the time of the ASCO we're gonna have five years data. Are uh, going a long way into convincing the physician that this is the right treatment. It is something new. We always have used surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy, and coming with a different device it takes a little bit of uh, uh, getting used to. But I think we're gonna have to for the good of our patients because this is really effective and this is now well proven with a long-term follow-up and a much larger number of patients. For the patients, um, I have this discussion in my clinic every day. I think increasing awareness and increasing understanding is a great step forward. And part of it is coming from the part of the physician presenting the data as we talked about them today and letting the patients know, uh, number one, about the efficacy, number two, about the fact that the side effects are very limited because this gets added to the treatments that the patients already have and it's adding very little side effects. It's preserving and maintaining the quality of life, a topic that we also have touched on. So with all of those data, I think that a number of the, more and more patients are gonna be convinced to embrace the therapy. I will also add a small caveat here, which is that it's very hard to be the first patient in a practice uh, adopting it. So I strongly recommend for the physicians that are just getting started with one patient, if the patient is still reluctant, that they will be put in touch either with the National Association, the uh, ABTA and NBTF, and they will talk about um, support groups for the patients wearing the device. Uh, the company also has a great ambassador program where patients can be paired with patients that are already using the device and learn from other people's experience how to incorporate it in the daily life. So I think for oncologists, you have to understand this, is, this, this treatment strategy is here. This, it's a totally novel treatment. It's going to be around. You're going to see this more and more. Um, I, I think, if you're, I think uh, you should try and familiarize yourself with it. It's a pretty easy training process to, um, 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 to figure out how to, to, uh, to prescribe the rays and figure out how to uh, plan the rays so that you could treat your individual patient. Uh, patients usually tolerate very well. They've come out, the FDA has approved the NextGen 2.0 device, which now only weighs two and a half pounds. It used to weigh five pounds, actually, sorry, six pounds. And uh, my patients tell me it's so much better. It's so much easier to work. It's kind of designed as sort of a messenger bag to like wear over your shoulder. One of my patients turned it, had his cousin who was a seamstress turn it into a fanny pack and he used, wears it as a fanny pack. And uh, it's very well tolerated. The main is skin reaction to the adhesive. 15 to 20% have that. And, and we just sort of deal with that with corticosteroid creams and stuff. And there's a lot of published data out there how to do with that. So I think what people have to do is you have to realize the world is not flat. The world is round. There's a lot of things out there uh, that can help us treat our patients. And uh, you have to convince yourself first, you know, look at the data. But then you should also talk to your patients because I have to say the number one proponent of this device, this is alternative therapy, right? This is not chemotherapy. This is not radiation. This is not surgery. It's, it's, it's not immunotherapy. This is something patients wanted. They were tired of feeling sick with chemo. They were tired of feeling tired with radiation. They were tired of going through surgeries. This is something they do themselves. The company comes to the person's house, sets up the ray. We just make the plan. They shave their heads every three or four days. They put it on. The family member helps them. They carry it around, and they do it. And in the trial, they had to do it 18 hours plus a day for two years, and people did it. And we had uh, one patient at Tufts that never has still not taken it off his head seven years later. The tumor still hasn't come back seven years later. So people are willing to do it. Uh, they don't find it to be, um, I mean, it clearly impacts quality of life, but so does everything else we do. And, uh, and I think everybody, the patients have found that the quality of life impact is acceptable to them. And definitely, it, I think the trial has shown a survival uh, advantage. So I'd say come to it with open mind, 
Share it with your patients. Let them make the decision. I've had young women with long hair that I thought would never be interested in the device, uh, and they sign up right away. I've had middle-aged guys who are basically have lost their hair who haven't been interested in the device. So it's been surprising to me. And let them make the decision, and you'll be surprised who makes the decision to do it. Because at the end of the day, we all they're all coming to you to live longer. And this is what this device has shown. So I was, you know, I got rid of my prejudice about the device because I saw that it had a survival advantage. And now I'm a firm believer in it. And I hope that, you know, you will open your minds up to it too as well and, and realize the same that I did. So people are, uh, have, have asked me, you know, how, what are the best candidates uh, for Optune? And I have to say, um, I think everybody is a candidate for Optune. And I think it's a personal preference on the part of the patient about whether they want to do it or not. Because if you think about it, all they have to be able to do, or a family has to be able to do, is shave their head, stick these adhesive pads, front, back, left, right, connect it to a, now it's a two pound device. So I told people it's like drop from your six pound Dell laptop to your MacBook Air, basically. You just can put it as a fanny pack or as a shoulder pad, and that's all you have to do, you just walk around with it. You have to wear it 18 hours a day. That's, that's actually been shown in the trials to be the minimum um, that you should do to get an effect from it. And, uh, and that doesn't take a lot. In fact, it was interesting in the EF11 trial, which is the recurrent GBM trial, some people were essentially bed bound, couldn't do anything, but they were still expressing a need to want to be treated or their families wanted them to be treated and they could still be treated. You don't really need to do much. You really just have to put some adhesive pads, shave your head, put some adhesive pads on your head and connect it up to uh, the, the device and then you're done, you know? So I think almost everybody is a candidate. It's a personal preference on the patient. And what I've been impressed with is patients have been wanting these alternative therapies. And I think I'm so glad that this alternative therapy has worked for them.